What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be talking about a Earl Grey Supreme Tea and the Aurora Ypsilon Deluxe. So this tea, much like the last video I did, which was the uh, Sailor 1911 Large White, um, is also from Harney and Sons, um, which I got from uh, Indigo or Chapters, depending on where you uh, shop, will depend on the name. Um, this, the other one was called Paris, and this one is Earl Grey Supreme. Uh, so it is also uh, 20 sachets or 20 tea bags, um, which equals out to about 1.4 ounces or 40 grams. Um, ordinarily, this would cost $10, um, but I bought it on a Boxing Day sale for $5. Um, so if you buy loose leaf tea, typically you're going to be buying about 50 grams worth of tea for anywhere between like six to nine dollars um, is going to be roughly the price range depending on the type you get. Um, so this does work out to be a little bit pricey, um, but on sale for five bucks, um, it was amazing. It was definitely worth it. Um, and to be honest, I actually really, really enjoy it. Um, so much so that I would probably pay uh, the full ten dollars for this. Um, this tastes like any other Earl Grey but a stronger version of it um, and I quite enjoy that. Um, up until now uh, twinnings or twinings as I was basically yelled about in other videos um, <laughs> for my pronunciation of it uh, has been my favorite Earl Grey tea um, but this is very quickly uh, catching up to that. Uh, so I still prefer the Twinings uh, Earl Grey for an everyday kind of experience, but when I want something really strong, this is definitely what I would go towards. Um, I like the fact that in this bag, there's loads of room up here so that the tea leaves have plenty of room to expand uh, so it doesn't get all like kind of crunched in. Um, and it comes, like I said, with 20 bags in here. I do put milk and sugar in it because it is quite strong, um, but I would highly, highly recommend that if you like Earl Grey and you want to try maybe a stronger Earl Grey, um, I would definitely recommend picking it up uh, because it's super, super tasty um, and I like the look of the tin. It's kind of like old school high tea look and I, and I dig it. <laughs> um, and the pen that I have paired with that today is the Aurora Ypsilon Deluxe Fountain Pen. So. Many of you are probably familiar with the Aurora Ypsilon already, uh, but what makes this deluxe is that it comes with a gold nib rather than the typical steel nib that you are uh, likely to find in this pen. Uh, so I have the black and platinum version, uh, but there are many other colors that you can choose from. Um, so mine is all black, um, not quite a cigar shape or anything like that because it does come to a flat end at the bottom, um, but it does kind of come to a wider point a little bit towards the end of the cap. Um, so you got, you know, black top here, a uh, silver accented or a chrome band, um, and the kind of black banding in the middle here um, will change. So if you get a blue pen, this would be blue, red pen, this would be red, etc. Um, the tension is pretty good. You will be able to slip things on easily. It's also tight enough um, where it will hold on to um, anything that you clip it to. Um, around the bottom of the cap you have a platinum band that just simply says Aurora Italy on it. Um, comes down to the end, it tapers out uh, to a, another uh, silver chrome colored band. Uh, this is a snap cap. So you just basically push it off and you have the grip section. Um, so you have a another chrome and another chrome band there uh, and it does taper down quite significantly. Um, it is borderline too small for me. Um, I like this for kind of like everyday writing um, but if I'm going to do like long sessions, uh, anything longer than 20 or 30 minutes, uh, this wouldn't necessarily be what I go towards uh, because it is quite thin. Um, the nib you can see is a 14 karat uh, medium nib. It's very, very smooth. Um, you can unscrew the barrel here to reveal the 
I believe this is standard international and it is included with the pen. Uh, it does push to post and as you heard, it snaps on quite securely. So you have a positive posting. It becomes a little bit back weighted for me, um, but if you have larger hands, because for me, like literally the crux of my grip here is exactly where this goes on to. So for me, it does become a little bit back weighted, um, but for guys or uh, ladies with larger hands, um, if your pen is gonna sit a little bit farther back, um, I think you will want to post this pen. Um, I like the weight of it when it's posted, um, but it just becomes a little bit back heavy for me. Um, unposted still sits very comfortably in my hand, um, but I really do think uh, people with larger hands, you will want to post this. Um, when I compare it to my uh, Aurora Optima that I have, you can definitely tell that the nib is significantly smaller. Um, this, of course, is also a 14 karat gold nib. Um, but you can tell that it is much, much smaller and the grip section is much larger as well. This though also has almost actually over double the price tag of this one though. So uh, this is also is piston. Uh, I do have a review of this one up as well. Um, gun to my head between the two, I would choose this one, um, but I do really enjoy the uh, Ypsilon. One pen that's pretty famous for having a very narrow grip section is the Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, and up against the Aurora Ypsilon, it's pretty similar. I would say the Pilot Metropolitan has a slightly slimmer grip section uh, towards the tapered end, uh, but it's pretty close. Um, so if you really, really hate the grip section of the Pilot Metropolitan, I would not recommend the Aurora Ypsilon. Um, but if you don't mind the grip section of the Pilot Metropolitan, uh, then you will pretty much have no issue with this one. Um, so I dig it. Uh, price point, usually um, you'll find these for about 200 bucks uh, US dollars for um, the deluxe version. Like I said, the steel version, you can get much cheaper. Um, I bought this on a Boxing Day sale from Pen Chalet. Um, so it was 15% off of that for me. Uh, so for Canadians, if you are paying the full 200 US dollars, that will round to about 260 Canadian dollars um, in the price point that we have our dollar at today. Um, so, uh, I would recommend waiting to get this on sale. Um, but if you, like I said, if you really enjoy thinner pens, um, then this may be something that you would really, really want to go towards. Um, but I'm going to stop rambling. Let's jump into the writing sample and I'll show you what this bad boy can do. I did also forget to mention that there are no threads since it is a snap cap um, and the step up here uh, really is pretty far back um, so you, you probably wouldn't put your thumb on it but if for whatever reason you do have a super far back grip you will feel that and it may annoy you um, but for me even though my thumb typically rests about here um, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, so the ink for today is Diatramentus Sahara Grey. And I don't understand why they have call it Sahara Gray. I mean, Sahara, sure, okay, it's kind of like desert, but gray, really? This is definitely a green. <laughs> um, not a favorite of mine. I probably would not buy it, but that's why I buy a lot of samples. Anyways, back to this pen. Uh, this is a 14 karat medium pen, uh, medium gold nib. You'll see the medium stamped on the feed uh, rather than the nib itself. Uh, this pen is very pleasantly wet. I enjoy that very, very much. Um, it's perfectly tuned out of the box. I have not done anything to it. Um, so I super enjoy that. By now, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I enjoy wet writing pens. Um, and this is a very, very smooth writer. You do get a little bit of feedback, not nearly as much as you do with the steel counterparts. Um, you do get a little bit of feedback, just enough to let you know that you're you know, pen is gliding across the paper, um, but really it's a very pleasant experience. The one thing I will say about this nib that I was not expecting and kind of dislike a little bit is that despite the fact that this is a gold nib, it is a very, very stiff nib. So you will get absolutely no, like, 
bounce or anything to it. Uh, you get ever so slightly, um, a, you know, a variation in line difference, but it's simply just because you're putting down more ink. Um, but you have to press really, really hard to get that. Uh, so this is a very stiff nib. Um, so don't expect anything uh, that w in that regards. Uh, reverse writing works very well, uh, and it actually works like it's still pretty like wet writing for reverse writing. Uh, you get a hint of a scratch, but nothing really too, you know, too crazy. Um, so other than the fact that it's a super stiff nib, I actually really like the way that this writes. Like I said, it's nice, nice and wet, and it's very, very smooth. Um, so I really dig it. I would recommend that you pick one up if you like uh, thinner pens. Um, and of course there are many, many other colors to choose from. Uh, but guys, that's going to be it for me today. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't done yet so already, please do subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle there on your screen. Um, new videos come out every Monday and Friday and the occasional Tuesday Q and A. Um, guys, feel free to leave some comments. Feel free to answer other people's comments. And as always, I will see you next time. Bye.